So now we're going to get into electrons. And electrons are important because they are actually going to determine how a molecule or an atom is going to react with other things. So if you remember, up here we had that lovely picture of helium, and it had the same number of protons as it did electrons. So what that means is those cancel each other out, and so that is going to be electrically neutral. And that's how things are sitting in the periodic table that you have in front of you, but sometimes that's not exactly reality. So that's what we're going to get into now. So, um, like I said, the ones that have the same number of protons and electrons are neutral and have a charge of zero. <clears throat> So there are going to be times when an atom is going to either gain or lose an electron, and that is going to be when we call it an ion. So an ion just means that it's either gained an electron or it's lost an electron. Now the thing you want to remember about that is then that ion is going to have a charge because it's either going to have more protons or more pluses than electrons or the opposite. It's going to have more electrons than it has protons, so it will be negative. So either way, it's going to have a charge if it's an ion. And the process of gaining or losing electrons is called ionization. Aren't scientists wacky with their words? So when something's becoming an ion, we call it ionization. Go figure. Okay, so um, there's basically two ways it can go, like I just said. You can either have a cation, and that's going to be where it has more protons than electrons, and so it's going to have a positive charge. Or you can have an anion, and an anion is going to be one that has less protons than electrons, and that one's going to have a negative charge. So um, the way I remember it is that cation actually has the letter T in the middle that looks like a plus, and plus stands for positive. So cations are positive, and anions are negative. Okay, so I have weird ways of remembering things. If you want to use them, great. If you're like, this girl is crazy, that is okay too. All right, so the next part is talking about energy levels and how atoms are going to have electrons floating around them in different energy levels. And we call them orbitals, and they're grouped and they're named, and we're not going to get too into that. But the main thing that I want to show you about them is that um, there's kind of a pattern that they're going to follow. So you're going to have that innermost one, and the innermost one can have a maximum of two electrons in it. Any more than that, and it's going to spill into the next one. The next one is going to have a maximum of eight electrons in it. And then the next one is going to also have a maximum of eight in that um, shell. So the reason I'm showing you this is if we go back to our periodic table, there are some patterns that are going to form. So let's look at lithium here, okay? Lithium has an atomic number of three. So that means it has how many electrons? You should be thinking three, okay? So if we go by this, I'm going to put Li in the middle so we know we're talking about lithium. It's got two in that first orbital and then one in that next orbital because those ex that extra one spills over, okay? So a couple of things. It has two orbitals, and it has one electron in its outermost shell, okay? Now let's talk about sodium right below it. So I've written Na for sodium, and it has how many electrons? Hopefully you're thinking 11, and so that means we've got two, eight, and then one. So now we've got three orbitals and one electron in its outermost shell. Now let's look at um, magnesium next to sodium right here. Magnesium, Mg, that's going to have 12 electrons. So we've got 2, 8, and 2. Okay? Now, one more I want to look at is beryllium right above that one. Beryllium has 4. So here's beryllium. So we've got 2, 
and then two. All right. The reason I'm having you do all of these is because there's going to be some similarities that hopefully you're going to notice. So the first one I want to talk about is if we look at the relationship between lithium and sodium, okay? Here's lithium, and what I want you to notice is that lithium has one electron in its outermost shell, and oh my God, so does sodium, okay? Now I want you to look at the number that you wrote at the top of that column. Hopefully you wrote the number one, the Roman numeral one. That is because all of the ones in this column are going to have one electron in their outermost shell. Okay? So that's true for all of the ones in here. So the reason that's nice is because maybe when I get to rubidium, I don't want to write out the whole 37 orbital setup, right? I could just look at the top and say, oh, it's got one in its outermost shell. All right? Now, if we look at beryllium and magnesium, here's beryllium. It has two in its outermost shell, and magnesium also has two in its outermost shell, and that makes sense because they're in the same column together, okay? So, and at the top it has a Roman numeral two. So that's what those Roman numerals mean all the way across, right? If we look at carbon here, carbon's got um, six electrons, so that means two in the innermost one, followed by four, and that has a Roman numeral four over it, okay? The other thing I want you to notice, if we compare lithium and beryllium, if we look at lithium, Lithium has two orbitals, and beryllium has two orbitals as well. And if you look, those are both in the same row that has a number two next to it. So I know, isn't this crazy? So that number along the side means that that's how many orbitals that they have. Same thing with sodium and magnesium, right? If we look at sodium, sodium has three orbitals, and so does magnesium, and there's a number three that's in the row that they're in. So that's what those numbers have to do with, okay? And the reason we care about that is because um, what we're really worried about with, with reactivity is going to be what are called valence electrons. And those are going to be the electrons in that outermost energy level. And so the reason we care about that is because in our periodic table, we have what are called the WIMPs, which are over here. And then over to the right, we have the bullies, right here, and this rightmost column here is going to be what we call the snobs of the periodic table, and I will explain why in just a moment. All right, let's talk about electrons and um, their behavior. So, obviously, there's two ways it can go. You can either gain an electron or you can lose an electron, and those processes are called oxidation and reduction really, really, really important when we talk about what's keeping you alive. There's a little organelle in your cells called a mitochondria, and all it's doing is moving electrons around, so there's oxidation and reduction happening, and that's what's literally keeping you alive. Don't worry, we will spend an entire chapter on that, so I know you're excited, right? So anyway, what we're going to do is talk about what these names mean. Oxidation is going to mean losing an electron, and Reduction means gaining an electron. And so I wrote these um, in bold after them to kind of help you to remember these two. So think of it in terms of a lion, right? And I think Leo the lion says grr. What the hell is Fleur talking about? Okay, let's look. Leo stands for lose electron oxidation, and grr stands for gain electron reduction. So that's how you can remember the difference between the two. So if I say something's oxidized, you can think, oh, Leo, that means it lost an electron oxidation. Okay? So that's going to be important um, later in some other chapters. Now let's talk about this periodic table again. I've already explained the groups that it's in and um, how it's going to affect the reactivity. So what we're talking about with reactivity is atoms are going to try and complete what's called the octet rule. And what I mean by that is they're trying to get eight electrons in their outermost shell. The only exception are going to be the ones that um, have two in their outermost shell and they're just going for two. So what they're going to do is react with other um, atoms in different ways in order to make that happen. That could be in terms of giving away electrons, taking electrons, or sometimes even sharing electrons. And that's what we're going to get into now. 
So if you remember, on the periodic table, I said the ones all the way over here to the right are what we call the snobs of the periodic table. And the reason we call them those is because they have eight in their um, outer electron shell, and so they don't need to react with anything because their octet rule is complete. Now, if we look at these other ones that I have here, you can see how, like, sodium only has one in its outermost shell. Well, that sucks, right? It wants to have eight. So is sodium going to spend all that time and energy trying to find seven more electrons? No way. What sodium's going to do is it's actually going to give away an electron. That way, if it does that, now its outermost shell has eight. If you look at, oh, let's see, magnesium, same thing. Magnesium only has two in its outermost shell. So it can give two away, and now it has eight in its outermost shell. So you're probably thinking, well, where are these electrons going? Well, let's talk about chlorine here. If you look at chlorine, it has 17 electrons, which means it's going to have seven in its outermost shell. So if it has seven in its outermost shell, it's easy for it to pick one up. And what better place to pick one up from than sodium? So a lot of times you'll see sodium written as Na+. Plus. Let's think about why. That means a charge of plus one. And if you think about it, back here we said that sodium gives away an electron. Well, electrons are negative, so if it gives away an electron, it's going to have a positive charge. So that's why it's usually written like that, because that's how sodium likes to sit. Chlorine, as we were talking about, is going to gain one electron. So if it gains an electron, it's going to have a charge of minus one. So these two can come together and form NaCl, and that's going to be neutral because you have plus one and minus one. So this is what forms your table salt, and so that's how that actually works. So the next time you salt your food, think of all the fun things you can tell people. You're welcome. Okay, so that's going to be how things are going to work. So when I was saying that you've got the wimps and the bullies and the snobs, we call these guys over here the snobs because they don't mess with anyone because they don't have to because their octet rule is happy. We call the ones next to them over here the bullies because they're going to take electrons from other ones. And then we call the ones all the way over here to the left the wimps because they give away their electrons. So that's kind of how they're all going to work, and that's going to affect the type of bonds that they're going to make. All right, so the next part we're going to get into is going to be chemical bonding and how chemical bonds are going to work.